Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. We have a pursuit 822 in the vehicle. This is dangerous. He's over. He got over the fence. They rammed him. They took him out. Suspect on foot. He's going to run the red light. He's going to run it. Good guys. Bad guys. Oh, there he goes. One thing in common, the need for speed. He's fifth killing. In the next hour, we will bring you the fastest pursuits ever seen. narrowly missing those other cars. An all-new show. These are the horsepower heavyweights, hitting the pavement with everything they've got. Adrenaline driven. We've got a bailout. Heart pounding. Pedal to the metal action. We have gathered these chases from cameras and police cars and from news and police units in the air. Look out, here he comes. Because once that chase begins, it's law and order versus crime and chaos. At top speed, be there. The intensity of a pursuit often mimics the offense a suspect is committed. The more heinous the crime, the more desperate the criminal will be to escape. Azusa, California. Right between those two cars, this guy's traveling at a high rate of speed and weaving all over the road. He's not slowing down for anything. He's not slowing down for anything. There's a very busy intersection ahead, and he's not slowing down at all. Between two cars again, and only inches to spare. At an intersection, not touching the brakes. Wow, he just missed a major collision. Two men fleeing the scene of a robbery are being pursued by officers. He's coming up on another intersection now, and it's jammed. He can't get by. Oh, he just rammed that car, pushing right out of the way. He's not letting anything get in his way. The suspects left two people tied up after robbing a hotel. They know they're running from 20 years in state prison. He just took out some traffic cones. Still at high speed. He just cut off that car, and now he crosses the median. The unit is closing at maybe position. He's right on him, but the driver's speeding up again. He's going to give it another try. But the SUV floors it. He's slowing down a little to make this corner, and this unit is right behind. He's going to try one more time. No. He can't get a good position. The SUV driver is speeding off. There's a freeway ramp up ahead. But if these two fugitives get onto a busy freeway, the results could be deadly. Right through that stoplight. He's coming up on the freeway ramp now. He, he may try to... Yes. He's heading on the freeway, going east on the 210 freeway. Here comes the unit. He speeds up, and now he's on the off-ramp. The off-ramp to the 210. He's got to pull the traffic. There's a moving van ahead. That's it. That's it. He's had a head-on collision with another SUV. That driver didn't even see the other car coming. It's a head-on collision. That innocent motorist never had a chance. The fugitive vehicle was hidden from view behind the moving van. So the other driver had no time to react. The driver suspect is out given up. But there are probably injuries here. The police have called for an ambulance. He's on the ground now with his hands up. He, he's given up. He's given up. The police want rescue workers to get to the woman in the other vehicle as soon as possible. But they still got potentially dangerous suspects on their hands. These are felony suspects. The police are approaching with weapons drawn. They're cuffing the driver who's on the ground and has given up. The second suspect is quickly removed from the SUV and joins his partner in crime on the ground. With the criminals safely out of the way, rescue workers rush to the minivan. The rescue workers have pried open the door. 
and they're looking inside. We don't know how many are inside or if they're injured. It was a pretty horrific crash. Okay, one woman is getting out. It looks as though there was just one person, the driver. She seems shaken up, but she's alive. She's standing. This woman was lucky. She survived a head-on collision with a crazed criminal hell-bent on avoiding capture. When the police are willing to use a dangerous maneuver by ramming a fleeing suspect's vehicle, the criminals got to know they mean business. And the game is over. But this driver chose to ignore it with a nearly fatal result. Burlington, North Carolina. An officer responds to a pursuit of a violent purse snatcher in a pickup. It's the kind of perp this lawman would love to nab. But the officer immediately reminds himself that this is no game, and that he can't let his emotions get in the way of a safe, effective pursuit. The suspect and his buddy charge onto the wrong side of the road, daring the officer to follow. But the officer quickly gains his composure, retreating to safety as he keeps the crooks in sight. So far, he's holding his adrenaline in check, and yet he's more determined than ever to nail these out of control crooks. When a backup unit offers to take the lead, the officer opts to keep the primary position. He wants to take this guy down, but he knows they can't be too anxious to take action. The suspect is reaching deadly speeds on this traffic-filled thoroughfare. Suddenly, the officer sees an opportunity. The suspect turns onto an empty neighborhood street, and the officer has only one thought on his mind. When the suspect hesitates at a cross street, the officer delivers a stern message. Incredibly, the warning goes unheeded. The frustrated officer moves in for the knockout punch. But he suddenly reconsiders. Just as he was delivering the second hit, the officer spotted a parked car in the line of fire. He released, only to watch the pickup overcorrect into a light pole. Debris flies from the truck. Its spare tire leaves a trail of sparks as it drags along the concrete. The wounded truck is headed for another parked car, but the driver wants no more. He bounces up the curb, killing the engine. Within seconds, a cadre of officers converge. They're all amped to catch this violent purse snatcher. But as professionals, they're even more pleased that they check their emotions during this high energy chase. And pick the right moment to act. So that no one else had to pay for this man's crimes. East Los Angeles, California. It all started when an officer tried to stop this van for a minor vehicle code violation. Now, the driver is wreaking major havoc on the streets of East LA. The other motorists barely have time to react. And this guy's got just the vehicle to do it. In this heavy duty two-ton van, it feels like an inner city tank. Speeds over 80 miles per hour. His closest pursuer is the officer who tried to pull him over. And he's on a motorcycle. Police scrambling to catch up. When traffic gets heavy, the suspect makes his own roads. Into the parking lot. Police closing in. This guy, he doesn't seem to care. The van charges ahead like a one-man armored assault, blowing stop signals. One red light after another. Muscling through traffic. Way too close for comfort. And worst of all, commandeering oncoming lanes. Wrong side of the road there, continuing, continuing around the next median. Traffic stopped ahead. Oncoming cars just got the green light. And, oh! He turned just in time to avoid a collision. Unbelievable. Police are left in the dust. The van peels under the freeway to gain more ground. Northbound on the five. And anyone in this way is wise to get out of the way. That motor has moved just in time. 
after the suspect is itching to complete his getaway. The suspect driving very fast. But as the punk thunders down an off-ramp, he's about to learn the downside to being unstoppable. Tight turn coming up. No time to stop. Another car's in his way. Oh! Oh, he plows right into the guardrail. That van is total. The other motorist on the off-ramp avoids being plowed into by milliseconds. Incredibly, the suspect is out, still trying to get away. But some of that macho seems to have disappeared. Scrambling for an escape route, but the police are everywhere. He's going over the wall, over the wall. No, 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 he surrenders, he surrenders, and this chase is all over. Well, this punk thought he was invincible behind the wheel. But when his unstoppable rampage hit an immovable guardrail, he learned a stunning lesson in physics and law enforcement. Next, on world's fastest police chaser, speed plus desperation equals danger and destruction. A scandalous speedmonger scatters the pedestrians. A Kentucky car thief creams the cross traffic and a California crazy smacks him in the back and just races away. Too fast, too foolish, and too fierce to be believed. Northridge, California. Okay, we know the man in the silver Honda Accord is a suspected car thief. It's a hot August night in the San Fernando Valley, and pursuing officers are keeping their cool. LAPD keeping up, but wisely hanging back, not forcing the situation at all right now. They know that in a chase like this, a suspect will either run out of gas, give up, or do something stupid to end it all by himself. Okay, here we go. Traffic stopped for the red light up ahead. Whoa, look at that, wrong side. Very close to those cars. Okay, westbound Devonshire. Barely slowing down for intersections, he pushes his vehicle harder and harder. Looks like he caught a little air there, at least 75 through that intersection. Still, officers keep their distance, but they're about to get very close. He's slowing down, turning left. No, oh, he hit that car. TA spins out. The police are right there. Look at this. He's going right between them. He's continuing southbound. Unbelievable. The suspect runs a red light and slams into the rear of a moving car. The impact spins him out facing police, but his nimble Civic simply cuts between them. Again, officers press on steadily. Northbound on Woodley now. But with a reckless suspect, it's only a matter of time until time runs out. And that time is now. Under the freeway, turning right, up on the, he hit the pole. He's, a, he's stopped now, he's stopped, he's running. Foot bail, foot bail. When he tries to duck onto a side street, he runs aground on a small island and hits a pole. In a flash, it's a foot race. Suspect running hard. Here comes the black and white. The suspect is on the sidewalk. He's got a very good lead. Southbound, toward the freeway, on his side street. The suspect fled his vehicle after already having an earlier hit and run. Here's an officer now. Look at him go. The suspect has a sizable lead, but the officer is really moving. OK, it looks like the officer is going to catch up. They're in the middle of the street now. He's slowing down. The officer tackles him. That is it, code four. Foot chase is over. What an ending to this very dramatic pursuit. Like a thoroughbred that's been reined in too long, this officer catches up to the suspect in no time at all and then takes him down. With restraint and professionalism, these pursuing officers gave this suspect enough room to make all the mistakes he needed, which finally give them the moment they needed to shut him down for good. Santa Ana, California. When officers tried to pull this car over for a failure to yield, the driver wouldn't yield for them either. Not stopping for anything. That's because the man behind the wheel is on parole. And from the way he took off. Oncoming lanes of traffic here, left turn. He definitely had something to hide. We're finding out more about this chase right now. Just before the news choppers arrived, the driver released a female hostage and then tried to ditch a semi-automatic weapon. Officers recovered the woman and the gun, 
but the evidence won't mean anything unless they catch the speeding suspect. For now, this chase is being turned over to the air units. Suddenly, the driver decides to go in the other direction. You turn, you turn, back, back the other way. The suspect hits 90 on surface streets, then decides to hit the freeway. Northbound, northbound on the 405. He's going 120 miles per hour down there. He screams past other cars like they're standing still. And when traffic gets heavier, he weaves through it at perilous speeds. It's like threading a needle. Suddenly, the suspect finds himself boxed in. And that's when the guy gets evil. Oh! He's pushed that car out of his way! He knew, the way he was weaving through traffic, that people ahead couldn't get out of the way. So he slams them. Oh, boy! He's pushed that car out of his way! Done with causing mayhem on the freeway, the suspect takes his rampage back to the streets. Cross traffic, cross traffic, close call! Oh, that guy didn't see him coming! Nearly every movie makes breaks the law. And for a man on parole, it's a tally he can't afford. As he menaces oncoming traffic. Nearly a head-on collision. Pulls hair-raising U-turns. Thankfully, no one's coming. And barrels through intersections with reckless abandon. Through the cross traffic, barely missing people on the sidewalk. Through the gas station, back on the street. Unbelievable. It's hard to count the number of laws he's broken in just this one intersection. Whether in cars or on foot, no one is safe from this maniac. Two pedestrians had to scramble to get out of his path. Now that the ground units have time to rally, they begin to make their presence known. Officers now closing in from all directions. Incredibly, the suspect keeps his composure. But as for his car, it starts to fall to pieces. There goes a tire. There goes a tire. He's got a blown tire, and now units are moving in. Even with only three tires on the road, the man at the wheel remains defiant. He even gives pursuing officers a dismissive wave. But his arrogance is about to cost him. The suspect is so distracted by signaling the officers, he doesn't have time to react to the cross traffic he's fast approaching. He plows into the side of a crossing sedan. And before anyone knows what hit them, the suspect fails. He's playing the scene. Officers jumping out, too. We got a foot pursuit. Finally, the man comes to his senses and surrenders. They got him in cuffs now. Officers take the suspect into custody. It's not the first time he's been in the back of a patrol car. This parolee thought he could run from his troubles. Not stopping for anything. But the more he ran, the more trouble he caused for everyone in his path of destruction. Those two pedestrians had to scramble to get out of his path. And ultimately, for himself. Georgetown, Kentucky. The shriek of sirens on the quiet night warns the countryside a high-speed pursuit is in progress. These two police cars are following a speeder, but what started out as a simple car stop has turned into a chase that has all the earmarks of ending badly. The car is stolen. Worse, it was stolen at night point from the driver's own relative. This isn't exactly a thinking man's car thief. Blind to where he's going, the fugitive charges into the only town in the area. Police barely have time to get intersections blocked before he rips past. As the driver exits town, he suddenly gets an idea. And as we all know, the only thing more dangerous than a stupid criminal is a stupid criminal with a plan. He heads for a nearby rural highway, hoping its evenly spaced traffic signals will give him an edge. It should only take one red light to spring him. The signal is red, but with visibility clear on both sides, officers have no trouble following him through. As the thief charges toward the next intersection, he's annoyed to see a cruiser lying in wait. What he doesn't see is the cross traffic. Oh, God. This is the cross traffic. I need to take a out here now. The civilian, enjoying what appeared to be a traffic free night, never anticipated the disaster. This is the cross traffic. I need to take a out here now. Officers circle around the tangled wreckage. Oh, my God. They find both parties alive and arrest the driver. 
Ironically, the felon's harebrained ride came to an end just one mile marker short of the main highway. Perhaps if he had made it and seen the police still in pursuit, he might have had the good sense to pull over. Then again, from stealing a relative's car, to speeding, to ignoring red lights, he didn't make a single move all night that smacked of good sense. Coming up on World's Fastest Police Chases. We try to swim across, across the lake to flee. Bulldogging the bad guy. Bumper cars on the boulevard. The riskiest move. At the highest speeds. To bring down the baddest boys around. Earth. Air. And fire. And water. All the elements of great action. Next. As he gets into his car each day, an officer has to ask, am I ready for a truly desperate fugitive? Am I ready for a shootout? Am I ready for a high-speed pursuit? Not exactly another day at the office. Lawrence County, Alabama. Trooper Wisner pursues two men in a weaving pickup. The officer can see this motorist is either drunk or blind. But the driver doesn't seem to think he has a problem. Just refusing to stop, 217. In fact, he's acting like there's nothing he can't do in his truck. Wisner shadows the pickup around the house in case the two men try to bail out. He's going around the house. Realizing he failed to ditch the cops in the backyard, the driver heads back onto the main road. The South suspect's new strategy is to quickly swerve around every car in his path. But at top speeds and with blurry vision, he's only setting himself up for disaster. His truck clipped another pickup and then flipped over four times, throwing out the passenger on the final spin. If this steel tumbleweed had rolled one more time, the passenger would have been crushed. Once Trooper Wisner learns no one is seriously hurt, he tries to get some answers from the driver. How much you had to drink? Whether he's drunk, dizzy, or just in denial, this guy's story will have to get sorted out in court. Why you tell me you wasn't driving? Saw you crawl out from over. The weaving driver was charged with DUI. Still, he refused to take responsibility for his actions, even after drunk driving turned his world upside down. <laughs> Hawthorne, California. It's mayhem on the streets as an armed convict goes on a rampage. Right through the red light. The driver recently broke out of prison, where he blew his chance for parole by failing a drug test. Cars moving out of his way and through the intersection. The police aren't taking any chances. Units moving in fast. They don't intend to let him get away again. Three units now in hot pursuit, jockeying for a pit maneuver. Oh! The two officers almost collided there. He just clipped the suspect's fender. The con feels the heat and throttles it. And at the next intersection, the outcome is nearly disastrous. Going fast, going fast, cross traffic. Oh, and he almost hit that car. Patrol cars lunge ahead. But the harder they push, the harder the driver stomps the gas. 70 miles an hour, just flying down these surface streets. When rush hour hits, traffic gets heavy. Opposing lane close to oncoming traffic, far too dangerous for the officers to make a move. With so many bystanders, police can't make a move yet. 
but as soon as they reach an open stretch of road, officers go on the offensive. Okay, here they get in position for the pit, but no, he slips away onto the freeway on-ramp, but the suspect swerves out of the way. Seconds later, the con is flying up the freeway, but he's far from alone. Police scrambling to catch up. The pressure is on, and the desperate driver warns other motorists to get out of his way. The man drives like he owns the freeway. But little does he realize, the end of the road is fast approaching. Well, the freeway dumps out at the airport ahead. Officers closing in. Let's see what happens. With nowhere to run, the suspect makes a rash maneuver. And a big mistake. Hard on the brakes, making a U-turn, and he's slammed by the officer, spinning into the guardrail. He's boxed in. This chase is over. As the driver pulls the U-turn, he's forced to slow down. The elite unit is given a perfect target and knocks the car for a loop. Surrounded by armed officers, even the hardened convict knows when it's better to surrender. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Lay down! Lay down! Code four. His reward for giving up without a fight? A one-way ride back home to the slammer. The officers played it safe. Units moving in fast. But when a dangerous convict terrorized the streets, through traffic, hard right. They got their man the hard way. He just flipped the suspect's fender. Through hard driving. Officers now closing in. And hard hitting. Ah, uh, this case is over. Next on World's Fastest Police Chases. He hit that car. They're burning up the road and nothing will get in their way. With suspects this determined, the cops pull out all the stops to match them move for move. Chases you've never seen before with endings you'll never forget. California. This pursuit has been going on now for over 20 minutes. Very fast car, very high speed. The driver of this Nissan sports car is wanted for questioning in a narcotics case. And clearly he has no intention of talking to anyone. Uh, this guy's got a very powerful car and he does not want to get caught. And to make matters worse, he's not alone. It's been reported that there's also a woman passenger in the car. A girlfriend, possibly a hostage. We just don't know at this time. Suddenly, the speeding car comes to a stop in the middle of the road. He's slowing, he's slowing. But this doesn't have the feel of someone who wants to surrender. The passenger door just opened, the woman's getting out. Wow, she looks like she's really glad to be out of that car. But the chase isn't over, not by a long shot. Oh man, this guy is really flying. With the girl out of the car, the suspect has just one idea. Push that Nissan to the limit. And this is a car built for serious speed. Okay, you see he's pulling ahead of the CHP units. Uh, if it's possible, I think he's going faster now. I'm now hearing that they have permission ahead to set out the spike strips. Spike strips are designed for two-lane roads or city streets. It's extremely difficult to get the spikes in place on a five-lane freeway. Did you see that? Like a bullfighter placing the sword, the officer went out into lanes, slid that spike strip right under the tires, and that car was not more than three feet away. Oh, I've never seen anything like that before. Not that close. Uh, we're not sure if he ran over the spikes, but I can tell you that the suspect is actually driving faster now than he was before. Wait, wait, he does seem to be going a little slower. You can see the CHP coming up, getting closer. Okay, he's pulling over to the divider. Maybe the spike strip's got it. Let's see. The police aren't about to forget that this guy has slowed down before with no intention of ending the chase. He's opening the door there. Whoa! The tire's just peeling off that left front wheel. What is he doing? He looks like he's looking at that barrier. Then the man does the dumbest thing he has done all night. He's out. He's going to try and go over the divider. He's in opposing lanes. This is insane. Totally insane. He's getting through. 
He's almost to the other side. You know the idea here is that the California Highway Patrol is not foolish enough to follow, not across traffic. All he has to do is cross those exit lanes into that wooded area, and he's home free. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. This is incredible. Okay, the dog is called off. Suspect's getting up, and no, he's down. Smart, smart. Well, the dog is back on him. Oh, that has to hurt. From the beginning, this drug suspect definitely had a lot of good ideas. Okay, you see he's pulling ahead of the CHP units. It was his idea to run from the police. It was his idea to get rid of the one reason to slow down. The woman's getting out. It was his idea that the police couldn't catch him. Oh, did you see that? It was his idea to take a wild chance. This is insane. But sometimes those good ideas will definitely come back to bite you. Dayton, Ohio. Here is a man who is about to find out why they put airbags in cars. A state highway patrolman chases a suspect in a stolen Jeep Grand Cherokee. With nothing but open road ahead of him, he pushes the SUV as hard as he can. He picks up momentum downhill. He wants to turn left, but at these speeds, he'll never make it. He jumps the curb, and the grassy hill acts as a ramp, sending his car flying over 30 feet and crashing through the wall of a bank. As the officer gets close, he makes a startling discovery. The suspect is still alive, saved by the airbag in his stolen vehicle. He'll stand trial for Grand Theft Auto, and maybe breaking and entering. Another fortunate felon wins the Angel of Mercy Airbag Award in Los Angeles. This white Mercury has already sustained major damage. Sparks, sparks flying from his right front wheel, turning left, turning left, cutting it very, very close. With a tire blown from a previous hit and run, this suspect's vehicle can barely hold the road. The blue sparks now in a, in a right turn lane, can't make it. He's going to go through that intersection the hard way. Uh, it's a miracle he hasn't hit anybody the way this guy is driving. Desperate to escape, the suspect floors it, sending out sparks like a rocket in the night. But this rocket is about to land. His vehicle has just crashed, has just crashed through a wall. Unbelievable. The instant he hits the wall, both front airbags deploy. When the suspect emerges from his total vehicle, he's shaken, but alive. Car makers go to extreme lengths to make their products as safe as possible, testing them in a variety of carefully controlled collisions. Airbags that inflate in a flash have saved countless lives, including the lives of the biggest crash test dummies of all, the ones who run from the law. Coming up on world's fastest police chases. Through a fence. Onto the grass. Over barbed wire. And into the water. Desperate crooks. Desperate majors. Please lose the control. Next. In a high speed pursuit, having a helicopter up there is a tremendous advantage. Even so, the culprit still has to be caught, brought down, and arrested by a police officer in a squad car. Indianapolis, Indiana. This brand new sedan was stolen just moments ago, and no one was around to see the thief taken. On the run, northbound on college. So imagine the driver's surprise when Deputy Tiffany Murphy suddenly appeared on his tail. I got a hit on the plate, just a random running of a license plate, and came back as a stolen vehicle. Good police work by the alert deputy and a blow to the perpetrator whose leisurely getaway suddenly became a desperate flight from the law. Blowing the stop sign, left turn, left turn. Rather than chase the suspect, Murphy calls ahead and has him place spike strips in his path. Threading through oncoming traffic, very dangerous driving here. Like clockwork, they divert traffic away from this open stretch of road where the suspect finds a surprise waiting. Stop sticks ahead, swerving around and Oh, up on the greenway, keeping up the grass. Look at that. He lost his bumper. As the driver tries to dodge the spikes, 
he loses control and bounds off the road. The car rips up the grassy embankment, which in turn rips off the bumper. This would be a good time for a sane person to stop running. Approaching the water, into the air, into the lake! The car has so much velocity, it actually catches air off the bank. The cars aren't built to fly. The determined driver bails out, and Deputy Murphy can't believe what she sees next. We try to swim across, across the lake to flee. In a day of surprises, this one takes the cake as the suspect actually tries to swim away from the dozens of officers converging on the scene. Where does this guy think he's going? As he thrashes toward the shore, the perp gets ready to continue his escape on foot. But officers have other plans. Canine units on the shore, and it looks like this guy is giving up. The soggy suspect finally admits he's beat and trudges up the shore to surrender. Down on the ground now, deputies are moving in to make the arrest. He was determined to escape by land. Up on the greenway, kicking up grass. By sky. In the air, in the lake. And water. But thanks to the sharp instincts of Deputy Tiffany Murphy. Where does this guy think he's going? This car thief's getaway was all washed up. Sun Valley, California. LAPD officers just wanted to stop the driver of this Ford minivan for suspected DUI. He's really flying now. He's doing at least 75 through this residential area. He blasted through that intersection in a vehicle more suited to running to the store than running from the law. Once more, there's traffic stopped up ahead, and he's going to, what's he going to do here? Veering left, look at that. He may have hit that car, he just squeezed past, and now it looks like he's getting on the freeway. It doesn't matter anyway, because moments later, he's back on surface streets, racing toward another intersection. He's not slowing down. There he goes, he's fishtailing. Oh, he hit that car! He hit that car! Okay, this is, a, he stopped. Look at this, he keeps going. He almost hit another car. This spin-out was unavoidable once the top-heavy van clipped that car. He's out of control, but he's not about to quit. Instead, he heads toward a less populated area. Suspect now moving deeper into this industrial zone. We'll see where this goes. All right, this looks like a dead end here. He's making a sharp turn. As long as there's pavement in front of him, this suspect will keep driving. But right now, he's found himself trapped in a narrow alleyway with only one way out. I think that there's a chain link fence at the end of this alleyway here. He's really flooring it. Unbelievable. Determined not to be fenced in, he uses his minivan as a battering ram. And when his vehicle will no longer run, he'll run. Foot fail. OK, he's trying to scale the fence. That's barbed wire. I can't believe it. That fence has barbed wire on the top of it. That has to be cutting into his hand, slowing him down. Officers are running to the scene. They're going to try and pull him down. One officer begins to climb toward the barbed wire and then realizes there's an open gate. While they take the smart way around, the suspect scrambles between trucks for a way out. There's an officer right behind him, and there's another fence, and it looks like the officer has him. He's right there. Within seconds, he's surrounded, subdued, and cuffed. Code 4, this one is over. It was just going to be a simple pullover for DUI. But this suspect was determined to make things worse for himself. He succeeded. If he is drunk, he'll wake up tomorrow, wishing he had quit while he was ahead. Coming up, a ragtop renegade rips up the road. And officers have to use every trick in the book just to stop him. Santa Ana, California. The CHP is in hot pursuit of a man who just wanted a cold drink. Witnesses say they saw the man kicking and punching a soda machine. And when the local police showed up, he took off. All right, he's heading south on the five. They don't know exactly why he's running, but they do know he has to be stopped. As a dehydrated driver speeds along the freeway, the California Highway Patrol takes command of the pursuit. 
He's squeezing his way through on the shoulder of the freeway, narrowly missing other cars. You can see the driver searching for something in his car. Not a good idea when you're going 90 on a busy freeway. He's not watching the road and driving very erratic. As he fumbles around in the car, he doesn't pay attention to what's ahead of him. Oh my, he almost crashed into the freeway divider. This guy is so lucky. Literally, a split second later, and this driver would have come to a complete stop. For good. He's still averaging up to about 75, 80 miles an hour. But even after experiencing a close call like that, this driver is still taking risky chances. Suspect is getting extremely close to a lot of cars. He starts to pose more of a threat to other drivers, so the CHP move in closer. Suspect picking up speed, moving to the center of the freeway. For the first time in the pursuit, the driver exits the freeway. Maybe he's decided to give up. He's taking the turn too fast. Maybe not. He's going back northbound now, northbound. Now he's headed down a dead-end street. It looks like he's giving up now, whether he likes it or not. He's boxed in. He's made a U-turn and just clipped the patrol car. This chase is definitely not over. He's getting back on the freeway, northbound five. The suspect is back to his fast and furious driving. A potentially deadly combination. Oh, no, he almost lost it. So far, this guy has been very lucky. But how much longer can he push his luck? CHP officers are afraid that this driver is starting to panic. So they pull back, hoping he'll slow down. But he doesn't slow down and pays the price. Oh, man, he's losing control. He was trying to pass that SUV when he skidded out on some sand. CHP moves in to end it. I can't believe it. He's still trying to get away. The CHP once held back. Now this officer latches on like a hungry pit bull. And look at, look at this. It just won't end. But finally, it's over. To pursuing officers, that 40 seconds felt like a nightmare that would never end. I just, I can't believe my eyes. He's actually still trying to get away. It goes on. And on. And on. Look at this. The pursuit just won't end. California Highway Patrol took extreme caution with a seriously deranged man. Luckily for everyone involved, it was a safe ending to a dangerous chase. The suspect is now under arrest. In serving the law, speed is a tool. In the service of crime, speed is a tear. It's a blade that cuts both ways. And those who run from the law learn soon enough just how fast that edge can be turned against them.